And that's fun, right? But that's not the big takeaway. The big takeaway is, what are they doing? Like, think of that. Think about what they're doing. What can filmmakers learn from the Pixar theory? I think what filmmakers can learn from the Pixar theory is, is the, just how fans think. And, and for people that don't, don't know the, the Pixar theory, the Pixar theory is the unofficial fan theory that all the Pixar movies exist in one narrative universe and they're all connected in crazy ways. Uh, where Pixar, the, the official line from Pixar is that all these things are disconnected, right? And they don't have anything to do with each other. Uh, but fans, they've constructed their own crazy interconnected universe. And so uh, what, what filmmakers can learn from that is that innately, fans love connection. They love things to cross over. They love the, the, the one story that they love to connect with the other story that they love. They desire this. And if, if, if they don't see a connection, they will figure out how there is a connection. And if you look at fan theories, not just the picture theory, but just like any fan theories, they are, are, are fun and interesting, but it shows the, the, the psychology and the mentality of the modern fandom that they crave connection. If you look at something like, um, you know, with uh, the fact that uh, if you watch episode one of Star Wars, um, in the Galactic Senate scene, there's a there's a pod of aliens that are all ETs, which means wait a minute, that's ET e is is in the Star Wars universe. Uh, which and, and so now these things are connected in a really interesting way. Which then, if you then go watch ET, that makes that that uh, that um, explains why ET reacts to the kid in the Yoda mask, not because he's an alien, but the reason he reacts to the Yoda mask is because he's Yo he knows Yoda because he's from the Star Wars universe, which means if when E.T. makes the bicycle fly at the end of the movie, he's not using weird alien magic, he's using the Force, which means E.T.'s a Jedi, which is awesome, and fans will work all that stuff out, and, and which is ridiculous, but it's fun, but it's ridiculous, but what it shows, so we shouldn't discard that as filmmakers, say, oh, that's just a crazy fan theory. No, no, like look at why the fan is doing that. And, and figure out how, like what, what's the mentality and what's the psychology behind that. They crave connection. You think about this, think about M, M. Night Shyamalan. What, you know, he, he, people haven't been excited about M. Night Shyamalan in 15 years, right? Uh, but then when he, made, when he made Split, right, which was a solid movie and it was good, but the best part of Split was at the end when they re revealed the connection to Unbreakable. And that's when people said, oh my God, M. Night Shyamalan, he's back. He, M. Night Shyamalan is great. It, it, he, his, his filmmaking didn't necessarily improve. He started connecting his stories and the fans got excited about it. So then you had Unbreakable, then he connected it with Split, and then they converged those things into, into Glass and, and he created his own little connected universe out of those three films, which fans loved. And it really revived his career. That one decision to connect those films revived his whole career in a great way. Right, Kevin Smith, you look back at Kevin Smith, who broke in with, with the glut of independent filmmakers that, that broke into the 90s. The, the thing that separated him from all those other filmmakers is the fact that he started connecting, interconnecting all his movies. His you know, Clerks connected to Mallrats, which collected the, connected to Chasing Amy, which connected to J Jay and Silent Bob. And, and uh, you know, they all existed in, in you know, this, this little town in Jersey. And they, 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 you know, they referred to the, different, the, 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 the plot points of the different movies in a really interesting way. Uh, but still in the way that they could still stand alone, but there was obvious there was a connection. That separated him from all those other filmmakers and, and, and was able to, uh, he created a community around his IP that other filmmakers weren't able to do because they didn't connect. Not so, and listen, I think we could probably, I think Kevin Smith would agree that he's not necessarily the best filmmaker of all those filmmakers that broke, uh, broke in in the 90s, right? Uh, but he was able to build just such a rapidly devout community because the fans were excited about the connections between the stories. And so, the, so for me, the Pixar theory is all about the fans and the way they think. It's not about, I mean, it's interesting to think about of like, well, the witch, you know, the witch in Brave is actually the little girl in Monsters, Inc. And uh, because when you, when you see the witch's cabin, there's a, there's a, there's an etching of Mike Wazowski and Sully in the wood carving of the, of, of the wall, which, which, uh, which then I think the theory says, uh, uh, after, after Sully leaves Boo at the end of Monsters, Inc., 
Um, she spends the rest of her life searching for him and uh, uses the magic of the doors to ultimately like get trapped in uh, you know ancient Scotland. And but she she understands how to use the magic of the doors to then turn people into bears. And the reason she turns them into bears is she's trying to recreate Sully in her own life, with always without you know with tragic results. And and it's like however the story goes, right? Or or the fact that I think that uh, the Pixar series theory says that. You know, um, uh, if you watch the end of Frozen, uh, uh, Rapunzel and the dude that Rapunzel, um, uh, Flynn, the dude that Rapunzel marries, uh, they're at Elsa's coronation, which means they're connected, which uh, then the, the, the theory said that Elsa's parents died in a, in a ship sinking accident, and, um, but they actually didn't die. The ship sank. Uh, they actually made it to a deserted island, restarted their lives, had a son on the island who was Tarzan, and then the ship that sank was the ship that the Little Mermaid explores at the beginning of the Little Mermaid when she finds the fork and all that stuff. And they create all this connection, and that's fun, right? But that's not the big takeaway. The big takeaway is, what are they doing? Like, think of that. Think about what they're doing. They're, they're working hard to create connection. That's what they want. They love it. They, that excites them, right? Connection, excite. That, this is why. That's why people. This is the brilliance of the MCU. This is the brilliance of what, 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 what of, of what's going on with the Mandalorian. This is this is the this is this is what this is, even in video games with, with things like Kingdom Hearts and 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 when you know, when you throw you know uh, uh, you know a, a crossover character into a Mortal Kombat game. We love crossover and connection. You look at Chicago Fire, Chicago Med, Chicago PD. All the biggest like rating uh, ratings events in TV are those crossover events, right? As a kid, I loved it when Scooby Doo crossed over with Batman and Robin and the the, the Globe Trotters, and there was the connection. The, like we, the fans always loved that stuff, and it's always played out, which makes me wonder why would a filmmaker ever make things without connections to other things? If you do, you're going against the psychology of the audience because the Pixar theory, for, first and foremost, shows the mindset of the modern fan, which means when you create something and you're not connecting anything, you're, you're, you're going against the expectation of the audience. And, and you know, ultimately, you know, that's, uh, uh, I, th I think if you, if you create things understanding your audience, and understand how they think and what motivates them and what they like. Uh, if, if, if you read up on, on this philosophy called phenomenology, uh, phenomenology is the philosophy of, of the, the high, the, 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 most art, the, the greatest artistic achievement of the artist is not the art itself. It's the experience that you create between the audience and the art. The experience is the, th is the achievement, not the art. But the only way to get the experience is to understand what the audience wants and how to create that experience with the art. And it's the combination that creates the experience. So, so you have to understand the psychology of the audience if you want to create that magical experience. And, and the Pixar theory gives us a very clear window into how the audience thinks. So is that why people love crime podcasts or puzzles? Because we're connecting, we're trying sure. to connect. Of course, I think it's just how we. That's how we operate. This is how we work. How our brains work, right? And and so we're always trying to connect pieces, and 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 our brain, our brain does it for us sometimes subconsciously. Just how we are. We like we like these interesting connections, and it plays out in entertainment. Uh, whether it's superhero stuff, whether it's what The Walking Dead uh, has been doing with crossing over all their shows, whether what you know what Hanna Barbera did way back in the day, whatever NBC does, like crossover events has been a staple of modern entertainment for decades. So this isn't a new thing. It's always worked, right? It's working even more now in a, in a sort of a modern multi-platform transmedia market. Uh, but, but this isn't sort of a, a new development. It's always worked, right? So I think understanding as a filmmaker, understanding the psychology of the audience and creating content that connects with other content, it, it, it's going to, it's going to, it's going to, Again, just increase your chances for your entertainment to really to really succeed in today's market.